Hey YouTube, Michal here. Today's audio will be recorded with the Sennheiser MD46. Now, I know it's not supposed to be used like this, in a studio, on a stand. It's a journalist microphone. It's designed for interviews. But the sound quality is so good, why not? If you are looking for a good interview microphone, hopefully this video will help you decide. And here is a few examples of the microphone in the action. I would say it's the audiences that really make it for me personally. It's because um, the show is so old, and um, it's known from people age six all the way up to um, you know elderly people. Everyone knows the music and the songs. So we had to design the filter so it was a much lower filter. Um, and then we had to actually crane the whole filter through the building and put it into place, um, which was already marked out for us. I can go and get tickets there easily. It just seems to be more, you know. If you go somewhere, you know you're part of the ATG group. You show your card and you're part of the family. Interesting fact, it was designed for NBC station for 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney. They also designed another microphone, MD42, but that one has got a different pickup button. I wonder why they didn't ask Rode. They are based in Australia. It's an XLR microphone. I have it connected to my Zoom H5 with an XLR cable. The gain is turned up to, well, it's between seven and eight. The only editing I'm going to do is normalizing. I'll let you know on the screen if that's what I did. MD46 has got a cardioid pickup pattern. What that means is that it picks up everything that's in front of it and just a little bit to the sides. Ideal for interviews. The pickup pattern is in a shape of a heart, hence the name. Solid build quality, all metal with a nice weight to it. The other microphone I mentioned, MD42, has got a omnidirectional pattern, which means that it picks up everything around it, everything, including the background noise. And that's the reason why I chose this one over it. I don't want the noise, I just want the voice. The advantage of using a omnidirectional microphone is that you don't have to point it at the subject's mouth. You can just you can just hold it in the middle between you and the subject and you should get both picked up. But with this one, you need to remember to point it towards the subject. So you ask the question and you point it. Now, you don't have to be exactly precise. You can be a little bit off the mouth and you should be still okay. Might as well talk about the handling noise. Apparently there shouldn't be any. That's one of the selling points. And what I mean by handling noise is your fingers moving up and down the microphone itself. Like this. So yeah, there's definitely some. So what you need to do is hold the microphone tight, don't move your fingers and you'll be fine. How well does it perform in windy conditions? I know, it's not a fair test. You're probably not going to be using it in wind this strong. Just to be honest, I haven't used the microphone outside in wind yet. Uh, all the videos were done indoors, but I would be careful. They claimed that there is no handling noise as well. So I normally use the microphone with this foamy on top. It's just a cheap one from Amazon. The original one was quite expensive. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. I prefer the look of the microphone without it, but I use it for two reasons. One of them is the wind protection, the occasional p -p 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 breath from the mouth. And the other one is the spit. Some people are quite spitty when they speak and I don't want that on the microphone. Great build quality, great sound. Definitely consider it if you're buying a new interview microphone. Like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.